yet another edition of Western Alaskan Bachelor and our new aquaponics system. I'll be covering some of the basics of the plant and ecological problems that we've had. Um, just to refresh, what we've done is start our seedlings in soil blocks here, and then those soil blocks, this is a calendula, this one here, uh, which we're growing for its edible flowers. It's also good for medicinal salves, but basically we just want the flowers on the salad. Also make the yard look pretty eventually. The idea is, of course, soil is precious in terms of its space and volume, and so we've got multiple crops coming on. So most of the pots we have have what I call a primary and a secondary. So, for example, in this pot here, my primary growing plant will be this arugula here, which is ready to harvest and really good. And my secondary is this wonderful little cool season plant called corn salad, or mesh. And so the two of them actually complement each other and we've got a ready-made salad. Now in some cases, I have a long-lived primary plant like this celery act, which actually will form an edible tuberous root. And so it will continue to grow after I harvest this short-lived arugula here. So we're working out a system with a number of different kinds of things. Other plants we've got, this is a miner's lettuce, Claytonia perfoliata, which is really pretty good. This is upland cress, a lepidium, called wrinkle crinkle cress, and it's growing with Italian parsley. And then this really nice plant here, which is red leaf sorrel, it has a lot of oxalic acid, also is an ornamental, so it will actually probably go outside when we're at full size here, and we'll rotate in with some summer stuff later on. So you can see essentially what the idea here is to create a very edible wetland because the water is flowing up under the surface. You can see it here flowing and then it just irrigates below the surface through all the pots here. Now one of the problems we had, and you can see they're getting younger and younger, these seedlings were just potted up today. This is Shungiko which is an edible chrysanthemum that uh, comes from Japan. And then it goes here and into the sump. Was we used, because we had a lot of them, we used a lot of wood chips for uh, our drainage layer and sort of to let the water flow through and the wood chips really unloaded the tannin. So it was amazing. We, uh, as soon as we started loading those wood chips in, the pH dropped abruptly from about 7.0 to 6.5. <laughs> and then kept going down. But, uh, being uh, familiar with limestone saturated landscapes in Texas, I knew that we could buffer the pH around 7 to 7.5 if we saturated the system with limestone. So that's why we put the oyster shells in the filter and added extra lime to the soils here. And the pH is actually stabilized around 7.3 for three weeks now. Our other numbers are looking pretty good except ammonia. The phosphorus has dropped to about 10% of its level two weeks ago. It is now at 0 .025 parts per million. So these guys are really sucking the phosphates out of the, out of the system uh, faster than the fish waste can put them in. The, um, the uh, nitrite is pretty low, which says we've got some conversion going on to nitrate. But the ammonia is staying really high, which says I've probably got a, still a skewed ratio, maybe some anaerobic decomposition in parts of this. So that says keep your fluids moving and don't add any more fish until we get the nitrate brought, or the ammonia brought down. Um, but as you can see, the plants are pretty healthy. And then we're having a lot of fun with mint and other things. You can check out the goldfish. They are noticeably increasing in size. Notice that they're used to being fed, but notice the color of the water from the tannins. So here we have kind of an anomaly of a tannin-rich water, which would normally be acidic, but the pH is running over seven. So it's a slightly alkaline tannin-rich water, but everybody seems pretty happy right now, so if it works, I'm not gonna try to fix it. And then, 
Our filter system, oh, and I put a yerba mansa here. This is just for fun. It's a highly thought out, uh, thought after medicinal plant, but I brought it up when I went down to Tucson, potted it up, and as you see, it's, it's flourishing here in this artificial marsh. But our real pride is watercress. Uh, it just thrives. And these gravel filters here, um, and I love it. And so this actually was just transplanted less than a week ago, and it's made full recovery. And it looks like we will be having watercress soup and watercress sandwiches and all the watercress we could possibly want, which is, in my opinion, a dream come true. So, another edition of Western Alaska Bachelor, King of the Watercress in Homer, Alaska.